Welcome back. It's mid-May, hitting over 100 degrees here in Palm Springs. And if that isn't enough, you can tell summer must be just around the corner, as the English department at our school, like most schools, is putting together a reading list for students to work on over the summer. These are encouraged for CP class students and required for students entering honors and AP classes, with some lurking tasks expected to ensure accountability when school starts in August. The goal is noble, the aim being to help students maintain the habit of reading, understand the level of sophistication they'll be dealing with when they return to class, and help them hit the ground running when they return to the classroom. But if you're only reading because it's required for school, you're missing the point. There are many important reasons to develop and maintain a reading habit. And to be honest, getting a grade or preparing for a quiz or exam is probably the least of them. In my classes, I like to share a list of arguments drawn from a book by master educator Kelly Gallagher's book, Reading Reasons. Having also taught algebra and geometry, I know everyone finds it easier to put time and effort into school activities when they feel like there's some logical reason to do so, that they're not doing it just because it's going to be on the quiz. So why should you read this summer? For the same reasons you should read during the school year. The same reasons I hope you'll read for the rest of your life. Reading is a key to learning, and I hope that by now, everyone understands the importance of becoming a lifelong learner. So I dearly hope you don't see reading as something to do because it's required now, looking forward to the day you graduate so you can put it behind you. So let's get started on this list, and Gallagher doesn't waste any time getting to the heart of the matter. Reason number one, Reading is rewarding. Reading rewards with entertainment, information, beauty, and truth. But we need to remember, it's only entertaining if it's a book that the reader can connect with. If you're not enjoying your summer reading, you're reading the wrong books. A good argument for self-selected summer reading can be found in Donald and Miller's blog post titled, Let My People Read, Link in the Doobly-Doo. Good books, when we get into them, take us to other worlds and introduce us to other lives that shed light on our own and those of everyone around us. They can be an escape from the world we confront daily and they can shine a light that lets us see that world more clearly. There are tangible concrete benefits to virtually everything you read, from the most complex arcane classic works of capital C classic literature to the billboard along the highway to the back of the cereal box sitting in front of you at breakfast. What I think Gallagher is specifically referring to in his first reason for reading are the rewards one finds by digging deep and looking closely at the text you encounter. The beautiful passages and touching lines that stay with you and move you. Writing that distills the essence of a subject and presents it in a way that stays with you long after you've set the book, essay, or article aside. Gallagher refers to readers as pearl divers, swimming through oceans of text, looking for gems to share. And he gives examples from both fiction and nonfiction of beautiful writing. Students and teachers alike are encouraged to find their own examples of such gems. Think of the proliferation of favorite quotes in Tumblr posts as an example. Like John Green's, if people were rain, I was a drizzle and she was a hurricane. Or, some infinities are bigger than others. But these only become deeply meaningful in their original context, with all the range, depth, and complexity of their full stories. This is, then, the first and foremost reason to read. Reading brings pleasure and knowledge. That really should be enough to encourage anyone to invest plenty of time with good books. But we'll be looking at the eight other reasons Gallagher points out in coming videos. We'll also talk about how to recognize just what makes a good book, and give some recommendations of a few that I like in coming videos. What about you? What do you read, and why? Have you found any pearls in your recent reading? Let me know in the comments, and good luck reading. Don't forget to be awesome.